to the uh, the CEO branch component and uh, capability manager. So we'll go ahead and turn it over to Lieutenant Colonel Will Leslie from uh, the branch component. Will, your mic. Hey, good morning, everyone. Lieutenant Colonel Will Leslie. I'm the uh, I'm sitting in for Lieutenant Colonel Brian Meister, the director of CA Proponent. Um, just want to make sure can everyone hear me? Over. Yes, we can hear you. Thanks. Okay. Um, going to be going over basically the, the DTL and P, uh, the, which we're responsible for here in Proponent, uh, starting with doctrine. Um, as you guys well are well aware, there's been a, a lot of uh, movement with inside the doctrine realm, uh, following off what Lieutenant Colonel Matt Ives was talking about. Um, currently, right now, the ATP for uh, Civil Network de uh, Design and Engagement is is published. We're awaiting the publication of the ATPs for Civil Affairs Planning uh, and Military Governance Operations Support to Transitional Governance. And uh, there are a multitude of RSOF CA uh, training publications that will be coming on coming out. And uh, Doctrine is going to be kicking off the CMI working group uh, to uh, to divorce, to support the development of uh, CMI. Uh, with regard to training development, um, one of the big things, uh, as, as many of you in the force are well aware and participated in, about two years ago, we started the whole process of, uh, of re-looking everything, every MOS and AOC within civil affairs uh, following the publication of FM3-57. Which drove, uh, which was driven by uh, all the processes, including the uh, the, the CBA. Um, once that publication was done, we did the job analysis process, CTSSBs for every single AOC and MOS in civil affairs, uh, which led to the development of individual critical task lists at echelon across all of those AOCs and MOSs, which then drove us to take a look at our training pathways. Um, and conduct uh, course design reviews. Those course design reviews uh, have led to new courseware for COMPO 1 and COMPO 3 uh, with uh, scheduled implementation uh, beginning in FY25. So you will see a new civil affairs qualification course for COMPO 1. You will see a revamped uh, civil affairs captain's career course for our COMPO 3 officers and updates and changes to AIT, MOST, and all of the uh, NCO uh, professional development PME courses um, that are occurring, all reflective of current doctrine and the subsequent updates and changes to the now validated individual critical task lists for all of our MOSs and AOCs. Um, we're also currently uh, working with the CPCOE, the Senate Civilian Protection Center of Excellence, uh, with regard to the civilian harm mitigation and response training, taking a look at the core tasks that we have uh, in civil affairs and what they're looking for in order to help shape and and uh, and bring those two organizations together to make sure that we are in line and supporting where necessary. Uh, with regard to personnel management, um, ensuring that the COMPO3 recruiting requirements are captured in the RAM. Uh, this is one of the big things, in, in, including ensuring that uh, U.S. Army Recruiting Command is tracking the requirements for use of KPOC and COMPO3 writ large with regard to civil affairs and make sure that those uh, those requirements are are being sought or they're going after them and that recruiters are also being uh, credited for that work. Um, and we're also working diligently through everything um, between personnel management and the training uh, development team, all things 38 golf with regards to military governance specialist uh, for, for Compo 3. That's, that's both the proper recruiting uh, ensuring that we're going after those people, paneling the right people, and developing a uh, very deliberate and functional training pathway to ensure that these individuals are receiving the necessary training. Um, finally, with uh, the leadership and education development, uh, there is tremendous effort on the part of Tim Strong and the team over there uh, with collaboration with the UNC system to develop advanced degree opportunities for every everyone. COMPO 3 and COMPO 1 throughout the UNC system, uh, establishing many memorandums of understanding and agreement, uh, and also you know, ensuring that all of our courses are receiving an adequate level of college credit that benefits uh, all of the service members that are coming in through initial entry training. And with that, I will pause for questions and or comments. Thanks, Will. I guess we can, uh, if you don't mind, we'll, we'll wait the comments uh, a little bit later, or questions a little bit later. Um, 
but let me advance here. Appreciate that update. And again, once my slide advancing skills is slow. All right, so uh, Will just talked about uh, pretty much, as he said, the, the doctrine, the training, the leader development, and the um, personnel pieces of DOTMO PFP. The capability manager is kind of uh, responsible for some of the others, uh, the concept, correction, the um, organization material and policy. And we also uh, uh, do concept development and experimentation. So just a couple of things that we're working on. And of course, concept development, uh, as we all have learned, it kind of drives the rest of the thing, concept development, experimentation, and you know, eventually things get into doctrine and, and all that. So right now, the um, capability manager division is working on a draft concept for civil affairs 2040. We have been working on 2030, but the Army's moved beyond that. So now we've got a, a concept for 2040 with a research question. By 2040 and beyond, during competition, crisis, and conflict, how will civil affairs forces, as part of an interagency and intergovernmental effort, integrate and synchronize all elements of national power with global and trans theater level operations, employ joint all domain effects to contribute to geographic combatant command and US government objectives. Uh, so from that research question, the uh, the concept paper pretty much outlines thoughts on how civil affairs forces will in integrate irregular warfare programs, missions and activities into interagency strategies to anticipate and defeat threats in fragile environments to achieve U.S. objectives in a population-centric uh, future operating environment. And it, it outlines three main roles for future civil affairs that will be integrated into Army experimentation and ultimately, as I said, into doctrine. And those three roles are special operations forces, conventional forces, interagency interdependence, or SOF, CF, interagency, or I, I3. The second one is setting the theater, and the third one is uh, the Civil Affairs Task Force. And we've actually already started experimenting a Civil Affairs Task Force in some of our um, Army-level experiments out at Fort Leavenworth, uh, down at uh, Fort Leonard Wood with the sustainment uh, folks, and, um, and into some of the combat training centers. So we're looking forward to the outcome of that. Uh, again, in, in experimentation, then, we, we continue to participate in the Army's Future Studies Program up there at Carlisle Barracks, Pennsylvania. And we also participate in limited experiment, uh, objective experimentation events at, again, CAC Leavenworth, uh, Mission Support, actually Mission Support Center of Excellence at um, Leonardwood. And as I said, we're already integrating ideas from the 2040 concepts and in, into discussions of uh, the future Army capability requirements. Within policy development, we are participating, or we have participated in uh, our in the review and comments of the uh, draft DODI 3000.xx uh, civil affairs, and we're eagerly anticipating the release of that latest version and the eventual publication of that. Regarding organizational design, usually I have Dr. Dale Walsh talk about the FDU, but he's uh, out of country on leave at the moment. But uh, the basically, <clears throat> excuse me, latest update is the Army Reserve Civil Affairs FDU has passed all of the force integration functional analysis gates at headquarters DA. The redesign required the inactivation of four US Army Reserve CA battalions to pay internal bills that will give greater capability to the Army's conventional civil affairs force. Right now, KPOC, use of KPOC is working through the process of identifying the battalions that will be inactivated. And we expect to see the structure changes, both the, um, the new structure, uh, what do you call it, the uh, requirements, officer war enlisted requirements at each of those new unit configurations, as well as the uh, units that will be inactivated. <clears throat> we expect to see those. Changes published in RSTRUCT 2630 uh, sometime in FY25. Finally, in, on the material 
development, the CA Capability Manager Division has been experimenting with something we call the Advanced Reporting Tool uh, TAC plugin. It was formerly known as CKI TAC or Civil Knowledge Integration Team Awareness Kit. ART is basically a, a software package built into an Android device and integrated with the Android Team Awareness Kit or ATAC system that facilitates the collection of data by CA teams at the tactical edge allows the data to be transmitted through multiple report formats for analysis, uh, as well as fusion with other data sources and, and integration into the civil layer of the common operating picture. And then finally, dissemination to military and civilian mission partners in the operational environment. U.S. SOCOM's Joint Acquisition Task Force has provided funding for continued development of this uh, new capability through FY 2025, as we work on making this a civil affairs program of record that eventually will be available to uh, the total CA force. And I think it's also um, being looked at by the Marine Marine Corps, uh, either in addition to or uh, beyond their uh, their current capability. So that's all I have on uh, as an update for the capability manager. And as I said, we'll, we'll take questions at the end, but. Let's go ahead and move on to the 95th Civil Affairs Brigade and Colonel Kismarek. Dave, your mic, over. All right, hey, thanks, Dennis. Appreciate the update. If we can go ahead and advance the slide. All right, I just wanted to, in order to kind of have the common, common civil affairs uh, group of interest on this one, we just wanted to make sure that we were very clear. You know, since the last time we met, we had some discussions about what was essentially uh, open in terms of waiting for approval, but you know we've we've been given the go ahead to start moving forward. So I just wanted to reiterate kind of what we're looking at from the brigade restructure as it was part of uh, RSOP realignment and reassignment. So to refresh everyone's memory, that focus specifically on uh, moving and achieving unity of effort through unity of command by moving some of the civil affairs battalions up underneath the special forces groups, and that would be. Um, done in conjunction with also the PSYOP battalions that were underneath there. So you have one, one focused command that is dedicated for each specific GCC and TSOC respectively. Um, but within the brigade, we saw some opportunities uh, that were given with this re, uh, reassignment, um, particularly number one, uh, being able to actually build out the capability of the brigade uh, to be much more responsive, particularly in crisis and in conflict. Uh, as opposed to, you know, sitting on Fort Liberty and doing the, the regular training, equipping and certifying of, of uh, companies and above uh, prior to deployment. So we've leveraged that capability and leveraged that opportunity to help build out some of that structure. So directing your attention to the to the top left with the structure piece that you see right there, um, just want to highlight a couple of things. First off, Civil Knowledge Center. That has become one of the huge uh huge focus areas, not only of the Joint Force and of RSOP, but also of the Army. The value that they're putting towards the civil information that is out there, uh, it cannot be understated. And they're wanting to see additional capabilities for that in follow-on exercises. Uh, that's already started to play out, um, starting off with uh, first the division rotation out at NTC with 1st Armor Division. Um, the way that they were looking at integrating some of that capabilities, not only in, in the deep fight, but also to looking at part of the consolidation of gains and, and setting conditions uh, to support the maneuver commander as they're looking at phase three uh, has been very, very well received. But then that also leads into the planning that we would have in order to set conditions for eventual phase four um, and stability operations subsequently follow. Uh, so that has been one of the big efforts. So we've consolidated all of our civil knowledge integration at the brigade level. Uh, when we pushed it down and when it was at the battalion level, it just it didn't quite have the horsepower to be able to accomplish everything that it needed to be uh, accomplished up there. So we're consolidating it and we're actually building out that capability to meet um, the Army and the Joint Forces requirements. And then uh, hats off to UFMC and USASOC, as well as uh, first SFC. Um, AI and USASOC AI to help us build out some of that capabilities. It goes beyond just team reporting, uh, leveraging publicly available information, uh, and then some of the more technical capabilities to be able to sort through that. Because the, the days of being able to do that thing manually, I think, is has passed us by. 
So we're continuing to push the envelope on that. We also have, even though the battalions are up underneath the, uh, the special forces groups, we do have a responsibility for training um, and readiness oversight, not authority, but oversight. And that's to ensure that we maintain a common understanding and a common capability that's not divergent because there, you have battalions up underneath five different uh, commanders. So we have that capability uh, in order to make sure that we're meeting those responsibilities. We've built out our training uh, readiness detachment, and that will do everything from help with script writing uh, with some of the folks forward at the, at the CTCs, but then also to making sure that annual training guidance that's published by the CG is in line to make sure that we have a common capability across the board, and then still getting out there to provide folks to be able to uh, certify or validate companies prior to them going out the door. Uh, you also have a planning capability, so expanding the CAPT responsibilities, because you know what we have seen across the board is anticipating that there is going to continue to be um, less folks that are available just because of the, the recruiting challenges and, and the size of the army moving forward. We, we see ourselves having to be able to provide some reinforcing support, whether that's in response to crisis or any type of updates of, of standing plans and those types of things. So having that capability will also be beneficial. Uh, and then you can see to the right, it, we actually do uh, have a capability for a company uh, as well as a, uh, it is not a battalion right now, um, but we're looking to have it led by an 05 and they will oversee those four companies with additional teams, downtrace teams there. Those are there to be able to provide any type of respond to crisis. Uh, as well as a little bit more proactive stuff, particularly to fill some of the gap that the the 83rd left as, as they've shuttered um, and will be closed out here in the next several weeks. Uh, looking at the operational functions as we see from, from the brigade, you can see the competition piece is something that is continually ongoing, uh, but it's not always in the, in the TSOC realm. Uh, there is the responsibility of supporting some of the uh, ASCC missions, obviously, you know, we, we've gone uh, out of our way and, and, you know, rebuilt, I would say, some of those relationships and continue to push hard with the standing KCOMs and the brigades out there supporting the GCCs. So there's a common understanding and information sharing of everything that's going on. Clearly, there's there's more work that's out there and there's not enough of all of us, Compo 1 and 3, to be able to do it. So we've got to be smarter in terms of our, our unity of effort. So being able to support that. Um couple of key training and validation pieces, and this is just some of the things that we have been picking up as we participate in some of the exercises. The, the movement, when you look, when you talk about 06 or an 05 level civil affairs task force like capability um, is probably moved up to a higher level than I think we, we've probably thought about maybe over the last, uh, last decade or two. Uh, it is definitely up there at, at at the theater army. And I know structurally the KCOMs are aligned to be able to support those things. Um, but really some of those 06 level, you know, brigade headquarters, obviously either supporting theater armies or supporting uh, cores, it becomes exceptionally important for that. So uh, we're gonna continue to push on um, as, we're, as we're doing some of our exercises. You can see as we're looking at validations there, uh, we did Project Convergence 24. But then also, too, we've got Warfighter 24, uh, TAC-5, which is coming up with 18th Airborne Corps and General Donahue, which will be a, a, a good kind of start off for kind of testing the paces of, of this structure that you see here. And then we're going to continue our, our efforts uh, with Stockholm, which we kind of put on hold as we did this reorganization piece. So it gave it about a, a six to eight month uh, timeout, and we'll start that up again in the springtime. But our overall goal is to put... Uh, put the folks from the 95th board as part of Pack Century aligned with uh, essentially a three-star level um, headquarters, whether that's a core, Pack Fleet, uh, Theater Army, but that will be a good test in terms of being able to provide the civil knowledge that's there through the, our Civil Knowledge Center, be able to provide information for the maneuver commander so that they can make intelligent decisions because what we've continued to hit over and over again is regardless of whether you're talking about crisis, any of the phases of conflict or uh, even the follow on activities for stabilization and eventually return to steady state, it requires a huge understanding of the civil component, all of the structures that are in it, key people 
and the infrastructure. So as I kind of see it from from uh, from my lens at the brigade, but up for the overall larger operational force, there's not a shortage of work to be done. And uh, I look forward to seeing, you know, as we continue to experiment with some of these capabilities to maybe make that jump from where we've historically been over the last, you know, two decades of, of GWAT and uh, move more towards the competition and obviously getting back to some of our roots in LISCO. So pending any questions, uh, I'll pause there and turn back to Dennis. Thank you, Dave. I think I'm having a little some issues here, but uh, thanks for that update. And I'm sure there'll be some questions there at the end. And I, I put a note in the chat. If anybody does have any questions they'd like to tee up, please go ahead and put them in the chat and we'll, we'll get to them after. So moving on now to Lieutenant Colonel Donahue over at UCK Park. You're my hey, Rob. <clears throat> thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you, Dennis, uh, General Van Rusen, and everyone. Thank you all for coming to this, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk uh, on behalf of General Johnson and my boss, uh, Colonel Jason Art. Uh, I'll be representing KPOC today. Uh, first, uh, Dennis kind of already hit on the force design updates. Um, we are working through uh, USARC and Forcecom and all the powers that be to determine. Uh, how this is going to work out. KPOC has made its rep, uh, its recommendations um, for the four battalions, but uh, obviously that is uh, that that decision is not made here with the KPOC commander. So we will all kind of stand by for that. Um, we already talked about the FDU and the uh, increased capabilities that will provide, and the second order effect of that FDU and the bill payer is the CA Bolick. Uh, CA Bolick, which we were working through that process also, um, again, requiring USARC uh, and Forcecom support to authorize the bill payers. Uh, currently, uh, I think uh, the, the requirement is four bill payers uh, in order to from from the Army Reserve in order to run that program for SWIC. So uh, we're working through that process. Uh, 38 Gulf really has kind of hit a, a high point. Uh, thank you to everyone and everyone's hard work at getting those guys out there. I noticed uh, on the first slide, I saw a picture of uh, Colonel Scott DeJesse and Captain uh, Sonia Dixon on their way back to Okinawa on that first picture. Uh, for the first time in 85 years, the United States government uh, repatriated stolen artwork from World War II. Uh, so that was a that was 38 Gulf Six Victors at the FBI and the Department of State all working together for that. It was a huge thing. So. Again, thank you everyone for that. Um, okay, exercises. I, I heard Colonel Kasmerick was talking a lot about exercises and, and that right there is a quick snapshot of a lot of what we are working right now. Um, use KPOC supports all CTC rotations. Um, we do support all warfighters at the core level. We are in the process right now of integrating that and expanding it. Uh, right now we are a small response cell we are working through Forcecom right now to update the troop list to allow KPOC to send its doctrinal um, uh, rule allocated rules to all warfighters. Um, but we have been supporting Third Corps and uh, we're getting ready to support for First Corps. Uh, we do we were part of just like uh, the 95th East KPOC was out there for the First Armored Division uh, warfighter or I'm sorry I'm sorry CTC rotation. And uh, we are also working through that process to make sure that now we'll be able to provide the battalion headquarters to uh, all division level uh, CTCs. Uh, JEPs and ODTs, uh, again, still kind of a lot of those going on out there. Somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, 88 JEPs, use KPOC will be supporting this year, and ODTs. Uh, in addition to uh, FTN missions picked up in Indo PACOM to support uh, what used to be in the past called Task Force Oceania under the dual-hatted commander, uh, General Mark Siekman. Uh, 38 Gulf engagements. Uh, we, we're talking about a new MOU between the University of Wisconsin. Uh, 38 Gulfs will teach ATMOT at the Center of Stability in Italy. Uh, again, uh, with Colonel DeJesse getting out there and doing a lot of this stuff, it, it just really has grown. So, uh, Shortly after Normandy, Colonel DeJesse and his team will be heading out to Italy to teach uh, this ATMOT course uh, at the Center for Stability and Policing in Vincenza, Italy. 
Also, I, I do know, uh, again, thank you, Colonel Kazmarek. He's been working with Colonel DeJesse a lot. And Colonel DeJesse and, and the 38 golf team are working hard with them to develop uh, a Ukrainian cop. Last thing, and, and I know many of the leaders on here have, have heard of Operation Toy Drop. And, and for all of you who are, you know, pre-2006 and remember, Randy, uh, it's been a big deal under UCK POC for the last 20-something years, 25 years. Uh, under General Johnson, it came back online in uh, 2022. Uh, with kind of a new flavor, and that's kind of why we call it 2.0. You know, everybody's talking about uh, working in the theaters and working with our partners and uh, interoperability. So this really is what Toy Drop is all about. Toy Drop, at this, the new version of Toy Drop, is interoperability. It's working with our partners. It's developing that partner, uh, that those partners to work together in the key theaters. Uh, we have started working through the ASCCs and through Security Cooperation Office. And last year, we had representation from every GCC. Uh, we had somebody from every GCC out here on the ground. Um, this past week, we met with Indopaycom and their desk officers to work through their partners of choice and get them here and help develop their capability here on, on Fort Liberty. So please uh, come out and see us in December and, and really see what kind of great training is going on with some of our partners across the globe and how we're inter we're working through those plans and getting everybody on here. Uh, there we go. Um, in conjunction with that, I know the CAA was part of the 2024 military ball. We will, or 2023, excuse me. We'll be doing another one here in 2024. It will also be in December, uh, right around toy drop time. Senior leader moves. Uh, I know this is probably interesting to a lot of everyone out there. Lots of changes coming on. Uh, General Johnson will be uh, changing command this summer. Uh, his successor has been named. It'll be uh, Brigadier General Carter. Uh, also, CW5 Chief Rich will be leaving as the CCWO. And uh, so there'll be lots of changes here on this side as well. Um, pending any questions for later, that's all I have, Dennis. Thank you all again for having me, and I appreciate everything.